Topping Talks. Hundred and five hours a week can't be beat. Welcome to Topping Talks. Topping Talks is a Topping Tribune production. Today's episode is proudly sponsored by Topping Technologies and ExpressVPN. Topping Talks is also on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. Topping Technologies is an IT value-added reseller and services company with a special proficiency in IT security. Heck, I see their founder at least twice a day. Guys, he's quite handsome and brilliant. He's me. That's a joke. If you're an IT leader or a business owner and need a little assistance, you can reach the team at sales at toppingtechnologies.com. Also, are you part of the 3.6% of Americans who still care about their privacy? If you are, then perfect. ExpressVPN can assist. Even though 96% of stats are made up on the spot, ExpressVPN does give 100% guarantee via their 30-day back money guarantee. Now, without further ado, today I'm proud to say I'm interviewing Josh Beaumont, who's the founder of Relentless Motorsports. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. What's up, buddy? How yeah. you doing? I was going to say, winding back the clock a couple years, what first got you to really get that itch for the automotives? Ah, my dad. My dad. It's one of the many bad habits I picked up. For <laughs> <laughs> so I've, been, I've been broke permanently ever since then. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Um, yeah, it was pretty much my dad and just going to local car meets and hanging around with my old man who's just a biker and built old muscle cars and did paint and body work and built old motorcycles and just did stuff that was kind of, uh, I guess you would say, uh, <laughs> frowned upon about by the rest of the family. But hey, I, I took after him and uh, yeah, I just, I applied a little bit more, uh, a little bit more, I, I don't even know what the word is to it, but uh, I turned it into something. I, I, I think I turned it into what he was going for. He just didn't have it. That's awesome. So what kind of stuff do you do in the old vintage cars and motorcycles? Sheet metal work, English wheel work, welding, paint what? body work, frame, built custom frames, uh, custom paint jobs, uh, fiberglass work. Uh, yeah, I, I pretty much from what I can remember of him doing growing up was like everything just short of upholstery. I, I mean, he didn't do upholstery yet, but I mean, he did like gold leafing and paint, pinstriping, sheet metal work. Um, built his own fenders and gas tanks for motorcycles and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, my dad was my dad was pretty talented. By the way, that's awesome. Yeah, he was a pretty talented dude. If you have one vehicle back, or what was the favorite vehicle you remember growing up that he was working on? His 1970 El Camino Super Sport. Oh, the good old El Camino. Yeah, man. It's like a mullet. Party in the front. Yeah. And bus Tr or business in the front, party, party in the back. Yeah, the truck car. Oh, yeah. man. One of my friends had one in the high school. He he didn't have the SS one. He had the base model, but it was so they're, much. It was so much fun. fun. Was it a stick shift or automatic or what? It was, kind? An, it was an automatic. It had a yeah. turbo four hundred in it. Oh yeah, there you go. So it was pretty cool. How big is that engine running these days or back then? Uh, it was a five hundred two. So it was a big. It was a big block. That's awesome. It's pretty cool. Reminds me of those old posters. There's no replacement for displacement. I don't know. It's, until you meet me and stick a turbo on a little six cylinder, but. You know. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, it was, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how much power the car was making, um, but I I remember when I was little. I mean, he would he would glue my little ass in the seat, and I'd smile and love every second of it. I remember him dropping me off one day at school in elementary school, and I didn't even tell him to do it. He burned out out of there, and they told him he could never bring the car on the school campus again. Really? Yeah, my dad burned out of the freaking. That's legendary. That's awesome. My dad didn't care. He was a biker. He was like outlaw. <laughs> My dad grew up having a rough life, grew up poor, and my dad just was like, screw it, you know? My life's already shitty. I'm going to make the best of it. My dad just didn't care. My dad did what he wanted. That's awesome. So, yeah, it, it was pretty wild, and I kind of I kind of embraced that. Like, my dad was just himself. I mean, I guess that's the best indirect lesson I could have gotten ever from my father was just be yourself and, you know, fuck what other people think. If either they like you or they don't. So. Sounds like you definitely got his entrepreneurial spirit. So, yeah, um, I wish my dad, I mean, God bless him. I mean, he passed away um, earlier this year, but, like, my dad was just, I think the reason my dad never became super-duper successful as far as, like, financially um, is because he just, he enjoyed what he loved so much that to him it was just too much fun. My dad had a bad habit of just doing shit just to do it. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where his whole the entrepreneur mark for my dad just fell off. It was just always oh, just hobby. Yeah. But 
Yeah, my my dad my dad was cool, man. My dad my dad was wild. And then I was gonna say, if you in terms of your first role in automotive, what was that first one after your dad's shop or after working a long time with your dad? Uh, I didn't really, I was around him a lot while he did it growing up, but when my parents got divorced, mind you, my parents got divorced when, you know, I was, I was young. I was like six years old. Oh, wow. Uh, my stepfather, is, uh, I'm going to say it on the podcast and I don't care. He's going to probably say it. He's a dickhead. Yes, Gordon, you're an asshole. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, around eight years old and stuff, you know, my mom, you know, normal people, you know, it's like, oh. I have custody of you, you know, daddy's bad, you know, daddy's party animal, drugs, your dad, your dad doesn't have his shit together, but so I didn't really get to be around my dad again until I was like, and my mid to late teens. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, my dad was just, he was working for his friend, Jack, that was a good friend of his. Jack was kind of an asshole, but he was a great teacher. Mm -hmm. It was, it was kind of like, like tough love fueled by like, egotistical maniac he, he yeah. my, another one he was just crazy didn't give a shit kind of outlaw stuff but my dad taught me my dad gave me the creative edge as far as like fabrication which we can get into a little bit later and just my artistic side like i'm, I, I'm an ex graffiti artist a paint and draw all sorts of stuff like that like i got my cool. dad's genes as far as that but as far as the urge to turn turn wrenches and tune stuff and tinker with stuff, my dad sparked the interest. But I think that my I did think that my dad's friend Jack, who I've always grown up calling him Uncle Jack, mm -hmm. I think he was the one that stuck the floppy disk in my head and downloaded the the, the program in there. Because oh, yeah. ever since I hung around his shop and hung out with him and tinkering around with cars and helping him push stuff in and out of the shop and organize tools, it's just like. At that point, I realized that, that, that this is my life. This is what I want to do. This is what makes me happy. What but kind of shop is that? It was what did just, you do? It was just it, just a basic automotive repair. You know, everything from brake jobs, oil changes, to full-on engine rebuilds. You know, oh, really? Performance work. Yeah, we always had some random crap show up there. You know, one day we'd be working on a, on a freaking 1,000-horsepower GTO drag car, and the next day we'd be doing brake rotors and stuff on, like, a PT Cruiser. And, oh, really? Yeah, so it, oh. it, it was cool. So I got that whole vast that's a, that's a, spectrum yeah. <laughs> of, you know, mild to wild shit that I was like, man, really? And then stuff was like, holy crap, I, cu I couldn't wait for the next day to get there. Right? Let me go to sleep early so tomorrow comes quicker. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, it just it kind of sparked that. And then later on, going through school, I was in high school, and uh, I would skip high school, and I'd go hang out. There's a shop not too far from the school in uh, Sunrise, Florida, which is in Fort Lauderdale, where I'm originally from. It's called Mars Automotive and Performance. I became friends with a guy that worked there named Kevin. And it was a it was a shop. They did basic mechanic work, make, mainly on like import cars, but their specialty was tinkering with MR2s and Toyota Supras. So, Classics. So we, were, so we were doing like two JZ, one JZ swaps. I don't know if many people know what that is, but you know, super motors. I was gonna say bit, one of the most iconic engines in so, history. You know, we, we were swapping those motors into everything from Toyota T100 pickup trucks to Toyota Cressidas. And really? Um, one day it was raining and this is really what sparked me wanting one was Kevin one day was, he's like, yo dude, it's starting to rain. He's like, I don't want you riding your bike. Throw your bike in the back of the shop. You'll get it tomorrow. He's like, I'm gonna give you a ride home. And it's funny because I own a car that looks just like it nowadays. He had a Garnet Red Pearl 93 SE 300 with a 1J swap in it with a big single turbo on it. And he took me for a ride and he floored it a little bit. And I think that was the first time I ever had literally been glued, even though my dad's El Camino was wild. Like that car glued me in a seat like a whole nother way I've never been. And from there on out, I wanted one. Really? Yeah. I just became like infatuated with them. I just like dreamed about them. Like hmm. most kids want that Lamborghini Countach. I wanted a freaking two J car. Yeah. So yeah, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> I didn't have money for that. So I I got the next best thing. I started tinkering with old old early late eighties early nineties Hondas. Hey, there you go. BF hatches like yeah. CRXs and uh, little little Del Souls and oh, Acura yeah. Integras and and stuff. Played around with a bunch of. I put a B twenty V Tech into a Civic. I built a B twenty V Tech. Did stuff like that. Um, my uh, my dad didn't really like too much. I was playing with the, the cars, but yeah. one time at the shop, um, 
my dad was like, these tuner cars aren't meant to be hooked up. He's like, these are econo boxes. They're shit boxes. Like my dad was a muscle car guy. <laughs> the dark, so you're going to the dark side I of the automotive. I, I was going to the dark side. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I traded this guy. I forgot his name in school. I forgot what I traded him something for a nitrous kit, like a universal nitrous kit. And yeah. I was like, and I found out how to do it and I hit it and I had it down under a spare tire well and I had a little sound system boom box in the trunk. My dad didn't know until that. And uh, yeah, I decided I was gonna do a little 75 shot nitrous hit down the street and I blew the motor up and my Jeez. dad came and <laughs> found out. My dad was pissed and my dad was like, hey dude, like you gotta go ahead and uh, yeah, Jack don't want your shit in the shop. You better figure out how to fix it. Oh really? And they gave me a deadline to figure out how to do it. And that's kind of what sparked me in like, like building like at that point it was like it was my own shit like yeah. i had to get it i had to figure it out was, it, nobody was helping me and it was i think that challenge there is what sparked me and got me even more into it, it was i like challenges i like yeah. things that challenge me so i didn't know really what i was doing well, how did you figure it out because that's before youtube right that like, was before youtube like before how did you, oh man was that before uh, yahoo i'm not sure i mean i was too poor to have computers <laughs> um how would I figure out? It was just a matter of like, you take it apart, look at it and figure it out. And I mean, yeah, you know, I could ask Jack and stuff questions here and there like, hey, what's this? Oh, that's a bearing or, hey, uh, what, what is the purpose in this? You know, as long as they saw that I was trying, they would kind of just give me little slivers to help me, but they made me pretty much use my brain to figure it out. So, so what was wrong with it? Did you have to just tear it down to every component first or it's, how did that it's process spun go? a connecting rod bearing and it damaged a crank and the rod up and yeah, it was nasty and it detonated because it, it was stock fuel system it didn't have tune on it it, uh, it damaged the piston it was detonation it blew the motor up the motor leaned out while i was full sending it oh jeez! It, it ran <laughs> it ran hard for about you know like 10 seconds and then, you know, <laughs> and then party uh, over but those 10 seconds it was just enough to blow your hair back and then after that it was game <laughs> over but it so was fine how the process go do you have to go and buy the new Parts online, and then they have ship here. Or? It was just a bunch of shit that we found at the local junkyard. You know? Oh, really? Yeah, man. It's just stuff at the junkyard. Yeah. You know, right down the street from the shop, we had MLL auto wrecking, and you pull it, and down on 441 in Florida, there was junkyards all over the place, and like little used car dealerships, mm -hmm. little shady used car dealership. You walk in there, hey, I know you guys sell cars, but you get a motor. They probably bring you in the back and have like five stolen ones sitting back there. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, uh, I mean, that was just the way of life back there. But, yeah, so I fixed that. And later on, I mean, it sparked the interest. And then I started tinkering around. One of my friends had an Acura Integra, and I started looking at the motor. I'm like, your frame rails and shit look really similar to my Civic. And at that <laughs> point, forums were just starting to pop off. So I'd go to the yeah. library, and I'd sit on the forums. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I put an Acura Integra 1.8-liter uh, LS Integra engine, non-VTEC 1.8-liter dual cam into a civic and that thing woke up and uh i for a while i was obsessed with nitrous i kept playing with nitrous i didn't lose learn my lesson i'm the <laughs> idiot that you know they say don't stick the fork in the electrical socket yeah. i'm like it feels good let me yeah. keep doing it <laughs> um and then you know it just it just manifested and snowballed it just became it just became just an addiction it was like the worst drug addiction ever i mean i had i didn't have a pot to piss in or a place to even sleep uh for for lack of a better word and like every dollar i made i was dumping into tuner cars and eventually as i got a little bit older and better at driving and controlling stuff i started hustling people i'd go out street races i'd be like i'd go out there in my little ragged out primer piece of shit civic with different colored bumpers and shit. i'd go out there and I, i'd hurt people's feelings What's, what was your best win or what, what was your favorite win back then uh, I had a green Honda Civic. Unfortunately, it got stolen. It was a really clean. It was a 95 Honda Civic CX hatch, um, better known as an EG chassis. I don't know if you know Civics. I know you know. I was going to say green, green Civic got my attention. You're, you're a man of class. I like it. But um, uh, we did a Integra GSR swap, which is still a B18. It was like yeah. the LS motor, but this one has VTEC in it. It's like 170 horsepower stock, but in a gutted hatch. That weighs one, nothing. With yeah. one seat in it. <laughs> No carpet, no, it was a seat and a dashboard. <laughs> and uh, had dark tint on the windows. You couldn't oh, see, yeah. I got the car with a dark tint. You, could, you couldn't see inside of it stuff. It was just lowered on the stock factory steel wheels without the hubcaps missing. And just kind of just, just looked like a clean hatch that was lowered. It had stock exhaust on it. It was real, real quiet. And 
that car didn't have nitrous on it, but that, that, that car had a, it was a GSR, it had a built head on it. Um, so it had cams, valves, valve springs, stock bottom end. And uh, yeah, I remember there was a guy that kept running his mouth out there. He had a uh, supercharged Golf, Volkswagen Golf, GTI with, or, or VR6. That was the VR6 one. Yeah. Whatever the, the whatever Volkswagen Golf had the V6 in it. Mm -hmm. And he just kept running his mouth. Uh, he was hothead. I remember he was a Puerto Rican guy. I remember he talked real fast. He just kept, come on, puppy. Come on, puppy. Run me. <laughs> run me. Your shit ain't shit. Your shit ain't shit. And my buddy that was out there, he's like, bro, go hurt him. Yeah. Either punch him in the mouth or go race him. <laughs> like, shut him up. Go yeah. punch him in the mouth or race him. So I told him, I'm like, all right, cool. I'll run you. And I went out there. And I actually, there's still a video on YouTube, but there's still a video to this day up on YouTube of that race. Really? Maybe we can clip it in and stuff. I was going to say, I'll have to check it out. Um, yeah, and uh, I went ahead and uh, I tore him up, and then his buddy had a, a Clips V6 Oh yeah. that uh, was on nitrous, and he wanted to race me too, and I, I took off on his buddy's car too, and they're like, what's in it? And I was just like, oh, it's just a shitty stock Civic. Like, don't yeah. worry about it. And it <laughs> pissed right? them off. They wanted to fight with me. They were mad. <laughs> yeah, so it, it had stock exhaust and everything on it. it. had a little electronic cutout underneath it. So I hit a switch on it, went right open header, and it was game on. You could hear it. Oh, Close really? it up. It was just around town quiet. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Later on, I messed with a little Integra. I had Integra. I hid nitrous lines through wiring harness loom on it. So it looked really? like a wiring harness, and I sprayed it up under the intake manifold up against the firewall. So I just... I, <laughs> that's clever. That's awesome. I, I don't like to admit this, and I'm not like this now, but back then, when, when you're on a budget and you're trying to hustle and make money, I mean, but... Uh, and you don't like losing. I mean, there's a place, called, there's a place for the... Uh, there's a place where, where cheaters go. It's called the winner's circle. You know? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I mean, if you look at Formula One, they've done it. NASCAR, they've oh, done yeah. it. Toyota got in trouble in Group B Rally for modifying turbos in their rally car. They got kicked out of Group B Rally for it. So, oh, really? Yeah. Or I think it was Group A or Group B Rally with the Celica GT4. Yeah, man. They were putting like a restrictor, a press restrictor in the turbo. It made the turbo mm -hmm. look smaller, the inducer of the turbo. Yeah. And after it went through tech and shit in the pit, they'd slide this thing out and they'd stick their air filter back on. They'd go out there and they were cheating. Jeez, it seems like that's half the half the rules in NASCAR come from like, it, or they like to call them not cheating, they're innovating or something like that. They're innovating. Yeah, yeah. like the Ferrari team in F one. It's like, oh yeah, all of a sudden when uh, they what was it? They did that study where they looked, somehow they were able to trick the fuel measure so they were able to push more fuel than the competition at certain points. In the I don't know. I've heard of race teams like using hollow sections in the frame that were filled with gas. All sorts right. of weird things. Oh yeah, that, I was gonna say innovate or die, right? You know, <laughs> oh, it's a stock motor. The head's ported, and it's got little things. You've decked the head, so it's got higher compression. No, a motor's factory. It's never been opened before, you know. <laughs> I didn't see nothing. And was that next shop? Is that when you started to modify the Supras? Or was uh, that a jack shop, or is that the next one? That Was that Mars Automotive and Performance? Mars. I started tinkering with Supras. And was, then it, was that the Mark IV? Mark IIIs, Mark IVs, IVs, oh. Cressidas, SC300s, GS300s, GS400s with corny toyota v8s pulled out actually they're not corny but um i'm more of a 2j guy oh yeah um well that's the yeah. icon and then after that um i went back to jacks and at that point i was full-fledged into tuner cars my dad kind of frowned upon me and all that until i scared the crap out of my dad in one of the civics that took him for a ride really i had a little turbo civic yeah and i scared the shit out of my dad my dad was like holy crap this thing and my dad stopped talking trash he didn't fully <laughs> like it yeah but he he kind of he kind of respected it afterwards. He stopped giving me trash. He was like, "All right, that's 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 pretty freaking cool, son." You know, right. pat on the back. <laughs> I don't really like it, but you know, yeah. <laughs> so it was so it was pretty cool. And uh, yeah, as I got older, you know, I started figuring the flipping out flipping game. You know, I was too poor to afford like nice shit, so I would I would either trade working on people's cars for parts and they weren't exactly the part I want, but I knew somebody that had what I wanted that wanted that. So I'd start flipping my way to the top and building up. And then I got into playing with like, you know, I've, after that I had like three, 350Zs. I've had uh, a couple Supras, uh, Toyota Cressidas. I had one RX-7. I had a tur second gen Turbo 2 RX-7. Um, a couple more Hondas, Acura RSX. Um, oh, nice. Uh, it was a Type S, um, a couple Nissan 240SXs. Uh, Classic. It's just cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, it just kind of snowballed from there. And then, you know, I just kind of, that, that was life. Like, I, my every waking minute was cars. And in a lot of ways, too, I'm surprised my wife puts up with it. I mean, she's into the cars, too. But 
Like, I, I eat, breathe, and shit cars. Like, yeah. that's my life. I love cars. Cars have taken me from being broke, living on the street, sleeping in a car, and struggling to get by, and battling drug addiction, and doing shit I'm not supposed to, and help me get my shit together. Um, they've helped me overcome adversity and, and depression. And um, and to this day, you know, at the, at the age of 35, I'm extremely pretty well off and uh i wouldn't quite say i'm rich there i'm working on it but you know and uh i basically owe it all to the what everybody told me was a bad habit turned out to be a blessing in disguise and even today i mean i'm still driving a mark IV supra i'm building uh, i got a one jz swap lexus sc 300 i'm building building a corvette c7 tinkering with that uh helping my buddy out right now my buddy mike um shout out to my buddy mike um, helping him with his Supra. We just did a PHR street torque kit, a uh, big single turbo. He's got oh, a nice, he's got a Mark four Supra. And I mean, my business, I mean, I've, I've set out to help fight the, the, uh, the plague of discontinuedness as I call it. And, you know, I started 3d printing, reproducing parts, working with other people to reproduce parts, started working with aftermarket companies to get parts for them to keep, to keep these cars going. And, uh, a lot of these old cars with age are suffering from a plague of a whole plethora of electrical issues. And I found right. out that I was good with electronics. So I've been fixing ECUs. That's what my business does. ECUs, gauge clusters, body control modules. And here I am to this day, I'm still tinkering with cars. That's awesome. I'm self-employed. I'm doing what I want. And you know, I'm, 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 I'm happy. And it, okay, I so what first inspired you to go work for yourself? Because that was with uh, Boost Rebel. That was your first. Yeah, it was e-commerce for automotive. So, as far as Boost Rebel goes, do you want like the whole thing that got me into that, or you just want to know what Boost Rebel was? Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear the backstory because that, that was your first kind of your entrepreneurial leap, right? So when I when I I, I was I was kind of persuaded, like half paid by a a shop out here. I'm not going to mention their name. I don't want to give them shout out and kind of on an NDA, so I can't really quite talk about it. But anyway, I was I was found by the shop. I, they told me, hey, dude, like, well, well, we want you to come out here and work for us, and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, well, fuck, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave my friends. I don't want to leave everything I know. And I moved out here to Texas. I moved to a little town, Terrell, Texas. It was a little total culture shock. I grew up in a big city, and all of a sudden I'm in a little podank backcountry wood, you know, dueling banjos going, like a little, little <laughs> country town. It's all old Western and old historical buildings and jacked up roads and everybody plays with hot muscle cars. And I'm some young guy in my early 20s driving around a town lost in a Honda Civic that could barely get through the potholes. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, um, I got sick. My, my, my boss, he was kind of, he's kind of nutty. He kind of, kind of pushed me away. I felt like I was walking on eggshells. Uh, I felt pressured like I was working with, uh, living with, with my stepfather who, uh, he wasn't exactly the best person in the world mm -hmm. um, and all that. And uh, it was all I had and I didn't know nothing out here. And I wound up, I wound up leaving there slash getting fired, leaving. I was getting ready to leave anyway, but he fired me. We bumped heads and it was like, fuck you, fuck you, blah, 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 we're out. Mm -hmm. And then I started going around town, knocking on shop doors. Hey, my name's Josh. I know I'm a young guy, but look, this is my pictures of what I've built. You know, yeah. will you give me a job? And I got sick of being told no, 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 no. And at the time, my ex-girlfriend, just like every other girlfriend up until the woman I'm with now, was like, well, when are you going to stop playing with cars? Hot Wheels cars are for children. You're a loser. Why don't you stop? Just like my family, everybody, everybody's shit on me for liking cars. And... Uh, I was just like, well, I would literally like, it would bother me. Like I would hold strong during the day and like at night when nobody was around, I'd literally like stress in bed. I'd be like, listen to the clock tick on the wall and just silence. And I'd be like, I'd be like, well, fuck, I'm going to be 30 before I know it. And uh, I didn't finish school. I, I didn't go to college. Um, I'm driving an old 90s shit box car with, a motor that's like leaking oil in it, even though it's part of modding a car. Um, every dollar I make, which is barely any at all, I'm paying bills and barely scratching by. I'm eating like shit. I'm out of shape. Um, you know, I'm like, maybe my family's right. Maybe I'm a loser. 
maybe this. And I'm like, no, but this is what I, this is all I know. And I'd lay in the bed and I'd like mentally argue with myself. It's like, well, if I quit doing this, what am I going to do? Well, dumbass, you don't do nothing. You don't know nothing else. What are you going to do? Mm. And I'm just like, you know, and I just kept going back and forth, back and forth with myself mentally. And I was like, well, fuck, I wish I wish I, maybe I should start my own shop. Maybe I should start my own business. So I, I get this bright idea and I went ahead and I'm like, next couple of days, I'm like, call my buddies back home and I'm sitting there. I'm like, hey, bro, uh, yeah, I'm going to start a business, man. They're like, dude, you're broke as shit. How are you going to start a business? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, fuck. And I go back to bed and my, my little mental box of hell, as I called it, and I battle at night and stay up and stress. Like, I'm running out of money. Clock's ticking. I, I'm, I'm in a state where I have no family. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know no friends. And so far, the people I've met, I feel like they really don't like me. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I don't have money to get back home. I'm like, fuck. Well. So I finally, I'm like, I'm going to go to Walmart. And go work at Walmart. Walmart's like, hey, fuck you. You know? Really? Uh, no, no. Um, you know, and then I go, like, to other places. Hey, Jiffy Lube, I'll work for you. They're like, oh, we're, we're fully staffed. What am, well, there's jobs in Dallas. It's like, I don't even have gas money to get to Dallas. Yeah. You know, even though it's only 35 minutes away, you know, mm-hmm. 45 minutes away. And I'm, I'm just, so, you know, I was just, I was just stressing my mind, my mind. And, you know, everything back then was, I can't, I had the typical average mindset mm. of, you know, like, you know, I can't, I can't, I had that scarcity mindset. Like I tried to hang on to every last dollar I had and, mm. I'd skip corners and I'd eat like shit. I was just trying to hang on. And, you know, I, 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 I thought like a poor, and I hate to say it because people are going to frown upon that and go, oh, poor, he's talking about me. Well, if that's you, I'm sorry. That's a mindset. And I figured that out. Um, and, uh, yeah, one day I just had this freaking brain fart. I was sitting, I was sitting on this little shitty hand-me-down laptop that I had, and I was just scrolling through, you know, like, online like ebay and looking at all this and i'm like well all these parts on here man somebody's selling them like how do these people get this money to sell this shit that some idiot like me spends his last dollars on yeah and can't avoid it because it's like a a crack addiction i'm like how do they do this you need that car upgrade you need that car upgrade you need dude the car feels slow now i need to go faster exactly a tenth oh. of a second is all it takes. My my buddy's car just kicked my ass. I can't no, I can't live with can't that. Have that. You know? So I started looking, and um, what I'm about to say is the realest thing, in my opinion, that's ever happened to me. And uh, one night, I had I just had this this epiphany, this 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 idea just slapped me in the face as hard as it could, and somehow it just it was scary. But I mean, you know, right on the other side of fear is exactly what you need, as as I believe. And um, I figured out, I was like, well, maybe I can use other people's money because I have none to build my business. So I made a little page on Facebook and I just kind of, I hated Facebook, but I started a Facebook. I made a page and I posted builds uh, of my, the cars I've done Mm -hmm. and little things. And I joined car pages on Facebook and, and car forms like Club Lexus and, Mm -hmm. Uh, civiceg.com and like nwp for life which was another honda forum and super forums and i've had all these cars in the past so i could get on there and talk with people even though i didn't have shit at this point mm-hmm. but like, you had the knowledge hey man your car is cool man like dude that, that's a nice precision turbo like yeah yeah and so and i created like this little, little social network and it was just i would post pictures of my work and get people follow. so i had a little bit of a following and i'm like okay cool i got a following it means people are paying attention to me now what am I going to do? You got the eyes on you. So I'm like, eyes are on me. So I started, I had to overcome fear of, of, of rejection. And I started hitting up companies like Motec that make standalone computers and HKS and any company I could think of. And, and you know, I'd message them, you know, like Greddy or Turbonetics. And I'd be like, hi, my name's Josh. I'm, you know, XYZ age, blah, 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 blah. I'm kind of a loser. I'm living in a rented bedroom and, uh, but hey, I'd like to sell your product. Um, so I have this idea. I'll market your guys' stuff for free. I have a little bit of eyes on me, and I'll, and you don't have to pay me for it. So if I'm not making you any money, you're not out. No risk. But all you have no risk at all. 
except for me looking like a total jackass and you can disown and be like dude i don't we're not associated we don't yeah. even know who this guy is he's not our pay stub he we don't know him he's some idiot so but if i do sell your stuff because i'm really nobody but uh i want like a five to ten percent cut mm -hmm. of the sale and the big company said no and i got discouraged really yeah big companies are like yeah you you, you got a brick and mortar building uh, no do you have do you have a dyno no do you do you have this fancy tool set with the latest and greatest tools i got i got harbor freight tools uh no uh they work they work but you know i guess they weren't good enough do you have a shop with banners all over the wall promoting our shit no well sorry do you have buy-in money to buy in i just said i didn't have money okay well sorry and i got discouraged and then i started noticing like new and up and coming companies were coming out on facebook mm -hmm. companies that were in other countries and they were trying to break through you know like little suspension companies and and uh turbo companies and little tiny companies that were selling tuning equipment and little piggyback units it was like hey dude i see you guys are trying to brand and market i'll market your stuff for you for free and the little companies i learned because they were little and i was little yeah they're hungry we became friends and they were hungry and we started working next thing you know it i have this whole freaking website i i one of my buddies my buddy ryan mm -hmm. Uh, built me a website and I agreed to give him half of my idea if it worked out. It was half his. Cool. So he built me this website and we had all this. And once the comp bigger company started seeing the website, mm. they started letting me sell their shit too. Damn. And I found other people that were vendors for them that were having trouble selling stuff. So I'd get to sell through them. And I just built this huge online e commerce performance parts website. That's awesome. How, how great did it feel? To have those companies come back to you and say, "Oh yeah, now now we're it, interested." It, it, felt, it felt really good, and I mean, dude, I was I wound up making sixty thousand dollars in a month. That's dude, astronomical. I literally went from being like broke, I could barely afford a little Caesar's pizza and some ramen noodles. Yeah. So it was cool, and uh, e com that was I was kind of getting into the e-commerce shit before drop shipping was a big thing. Now everybody online is oh, yeah. like, a, it's a cliche. Hey, it's like everyone. But, uh, but it was cool, and then later on, other people found out market kind of died. I kind of was, kind of wasn't doing what it was no more. Did the margins just kind of, did just, just competition kept growing, or did other, competition kept yeah. doing? And then other people were getting on. They were kind of doing it, and uh, I was doing it for survival. I started noticing other people were kind of getting into the game of side hustle money. Mm -hmm. So like you know, you have like map pricing, like this beer. Let's say you know. I'm selling this beer to you. I'm not allowed to sell this. My price is eight dollars, but I can't sell it any less than $13.50, that's yeah. bare minimum. minimum. So is these it? people were backdooring, buying it from like two other vendors and it was getting passed down. So there was no repercussions for them doing whatever. And they would literally get it for the same price as me. And they would sell it just cause it was side hustle money mm. for like a $3 profit. I couldn't do Jesus. that even if I wanted to. Yeah, you lose I money. Do. So they're sitting there, so you know, it started getting to the point where I have people, no bro, I can get my, my price on a set of springs was like, 850 and i had to sell them for a thousand they're like you want a thousand bucks for that bro freaking mike down the street is selling that for for 875 with free shipping i was like bro like Jeez, how, you're losing, I, yeah i'm like i don't know how he's doing that i can't do that do you think they're doing it for the bulk because i know like certain manufacturers they, a lot of them were doing it for a bulk and i think by them doing it for bulk they were getting discounts. better cuts than i was getting yeah. and a lot of these people i think that they were buying had, had like brick and mortar sh shops or and whatnot so they had like storefronts and this i was literally running it from a laptop yeah. in a section eight apartment renting a room that's awesome on a laptop yeah sitting there in my boxers yeah listening to to youtube music connecting the dots you know plugging a to b yeah and you know me being c and trying to make sure you know, everything gets in place uh you know calling the company and be like hey dude make sure you put my address and my name on it you yeah know? exactly Give me my cut. Oh, the mo money's coming through on PayPal now. You should have it in 24 hours, you know, like that. And uh, yeah, it just, it just grew and it became something. And then I got out of that and uh, some other stuff came up. I don't know if you want to touch on that topic. I know you had some topics written down there. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, so is so. that from there? Did you start Relentless Motorsports? No. So I wound up taking care of a she was kind of like a mother friend to me uh she had a heart problem and i wound up um wound up later on working with another shop and i'm still doing the drop shipping on the side but it was kind of 
slowed down drastically. I started working part time in another shop, which I'm not going to say names. Ours. Um, but I started working on like Ferraris and cool oh, really? stuff, and all that. This shop and Bonneville salt flat cars and all sorts of shit. And the guy there taught me a whole lot about like wiring and mm-hmm. building mill spec wiring harness, all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, um, later on from there, it was just going on. I wound up meeting this guy. He told me he was a doctor. So here's what shit gets really shitty. Um, I wound up meeting this guy. His name was. He referred to himself as doctor. I found out he's a medical, he was a um, what, 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 nurse practitioner. Oh, yeah. So he was like, kind of like a doctor, but not, yeah. but he was telling me he was a he was a doctor. He was the grand shebang, you know? Yeah. Dr. E, Parnell E. Desir. Well, anyway, turns out the guy was into Porsches. I like Porsches. We were talking, he heard me talking on the phone as he came in, and uh, we were at the hospital in Dallas. And uh, he's like, so afterwards, he's like, you into cars? I'm like, yeah. He was a older black dude from New York, you know, pretty laid back dude. You like you like cars, young man? Yeah, I like cars. He's like, I got a Porsche. Do you work on Porsches? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I can get you parts for that Porsche too. You know, I just saw money. Yeah. Uh, doctor, he's talking Porsches. I'm like, I'm gonna get you. We exchange numbers. We hang out. Started hanging out with him and. uh drinking beers and the guy was from the Caribbean. So I grew up in Florida. So we kind of clicked off. He'd make me some like jerk chicken and oxtail and there you go. go to his house and drink a couple beers. And back, back in that day, I probably shouldn't even say this back in that day, I used to smoke pot and go there and yeah. smoke a little joint with them and kick it and, there you go. and all that other stuff. And, um, we wound up making a tool. It was more so his idea than mine, but I had the, the knowledge and behind the manufacturing and the engineering behind it from, making stuff for cars and mm-hmm. doing machine work and doing stuff like that. And well, we made a tool for the medical industry. Oh, really? What kind? Uh, it cleared cardiovascular blockages, whether it's in use or not now, I don't know. Basically I was young. I was mm-hmm. stupid. I didn't know better, um, to sign papers or anything. I was just, I was hanging out with my older buddy, man. Yeah. You know, it was cool. Anyway, he screwed me over. I got a bunch of money. Um, and I was supposed to get royalties and shit. Well, wound up, he wound up patting the shit, taking all the credit for it, and he bounced out. To this day, I don't know where he's at. The last bit of information I was able to find by digging on the internet is he went back to New York where he's from. Well, he grew up, mm. but I seriously think he went back home. He was from the Dominican Republic. Really? So did you accidentally sign away your rights to, to the patent that you guys worked on together? Or? I didn't even sign my name that I was part of anything. I was just hanging out. I was a young dude in my 20s yeah. hanging out with him. And, uh, yeah, well, eventually I started realizing that even though you get a huge lump sum of money, mm. shit runs out. Um, X was stealing money and cleaning me out and shit. And once I basically realized that money was starting to run down and the world's very unforgiven, I was getting fucked. Um, I pretty much wound up getting screwed out of everything and they went out of my life and I was once again left with $15,000 to my name. Mm-hmm. Uh, a little over fifteen thousand dollars, and I was like, "Fuck!" Well, I, I'm living in a nice neighborhood, got nice cars. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm to the point now where I haven't worked for somebody in a little while. What the fuck am I gonna do? I don't want to work for somebody. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Um, I went digging through closets to start selling old car parts that I wasn't using. I wound up selling an ECU mm-hmm. to uh, to a to a and I was, I was going to say, for the folks at home who, like, my parents aren't really big into tech and cars, what's an ECU for folks at home? Uh, engine control unit, engine control module. It's the computer that controls the EFI, which stands for electronic fuel injection. So, like, your fuel system and your ignition system in a modern car, you know. Um, the computers in some of the older Toyotas that I'm into, they, they take a dump just from age, and there's some design flaws and whatnot in them. So, um, I'll give you a little backstory first on that. Uh, when I was still working... For somebody, I when I first moved out here, I had a computer to take a crap. Mm-hmm. I sent it out to a company that we specialized in fixing these. I paid them money I really didn't have. They sent it back, and it was worse than it was. The guy over oh, there basically told me to go kick rocks, fuck off. What? It's an old car. So I had no choice but to figure it out. So I went up to the local Radio Shack, back when Radio Shack was still around. The old yeah. man in there was cool. 
And he explained kind of what things were. And Are you serious? Uh, I went ahead. I had no choice. I was like, it's already fucked. Let me give it a try. And I was able to figure it out, and I got it working. What what year uh, was it? A Supra or a Mark? What, what was it, it? It was a Lexus SC300. Oh, nice. What? It was a 95 Lexus SC300. It was a 2JZ non-turbo yeah. CU. And uh, I wound up getting run it and stuff. So years later, after I came into money, I was able to buy standalone computer and the latest and greatest shit. I came into money. Mm-hmm. And um, I went ahead and... Uh, I had all this old crap because I'm kind of a hoarder. I don't get rid of nothing. So I had all this stuff. So I'm like, fuck, I'm running out of money. So I posted ECU up online. I sold it. Turns out the dude bought it as a full shop foreman for a Toyota dealership in California. He's like, man, this my car's never run this good. He's like, you sure that's the right computer? I'm like, it's what you asked. You ran the part number. Yeah, yeah. obviously. It's, it's like, dude, what is it? I'm like, well, I tinkered with it. He's like, what do you do? You tuned it. I'm like, no. I'm like, it took a dump and I rebuilt it. I'm like, open it up and look inside. You know, this is before I owned like a company company. I didn't yeah. care about warranty or I'm like, open it up. Mm-hmm. So he's like, this cool. He's like, me and a bunch of my buddies who are also techs all have this and I'm a foreman for this dealer. Next thing you know, he sends me a freaking Rubbermaid bin full of TC. He's like, if you can't fix them, you can't fix them, but try. Yeah. So I start fixing and then boom, boom, boom. Next thing you know, I have his buddies or friends with importers that are bringing cars into the country and I'm fixing their stuff and other dealerships and then. I started posting it on like the forums and Facebook and I just started having this and boom, here we are now. That's I'm, awesome. I'm the guy that's fixing, I'm fixing all the nineties burnt yeah. out crap that nobody else could fix or want to even fix. I mean, let this more sports is born and it was born. That's so cool. And literally fixing the things dreams are made of. I mean, to, to me, to me, the Supra, the Mark four is I'm a, I'm a product. Pinnacle. I'm a product of desperation and a product of, I will not quit. That's where the name of relentless comes. From. I love it. It's like do or die. It's like jumping in the deep end of the pool, not knowing how to swim. Either you're going to figure it out real fast or you're going to die. Yeah. That's my life. What was the most unusual CP or ECU they've come across? Or what's the most kind of the weirdest thing that someone's ever asked in terms of like, well, I've never heard of this car before. What, what kind of, what's, what's the real, what's I've, I've worked, you? Uh, so the business is international. So I get to work on stuff that we don't even have here in the country. I've worked on oh, a really? bunch of Nissan Skyline stuff, a Suzuki Cappuccino, which is like this little itty bitty roadster. A Cappuccino? Itty-bitty. Yeah, little tiny thing. That's made hilarious. By really? Um, Honda Beat. It's another little oh, yeah. small I've car. Seen, I've seen that. Um, shoot, I've started, I've worked on Toyota Prados, which are like these little, little tiny, it's kind of like a, uh, what's it called? Like a Forerunner. Oh, yeah. Um, worked on a bunch of uh, Ford four seal, cylinder diesel things because over in new zealand australia they have like these little four-cylinder ford rangers that we don't have here it's a four-cylinder diesel engine really cool that's pretty neat Uh, toyota hilux which is kind of like a t100 tacoma um toyota hiaces which are like little pac-man minivans that uh what i say pac-man uh there's a game i used to play when i was younger at the arcade what was it a tokyo extreme i think Mm -hmm. it was or one gun midnight and pac-man it was in the game and he drove these little yellow High Ace Van, so I've always called really? it a Pac-Man Van. Yeah, I like it. Um, but it was just, it's just kind of gone from there. And I mean, now I've worked on everything from like Lamborghini. I have a client in uh, Dubai that sends me Ferraris and Lamborghini stuff. And oh, cool. All sorts of random stuff. Uh, I've worked on a bunch of everything from like Huracan ECUs to freaking Performantes. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, are, are they really different? Like when you open them up. A circuit they... board's a circuit board, man. Yeah. Circuit board to circuit board. Even an Italian you one? A, yeah, you being no. you in <laughs> IT, I mean, like, software is software. It's all coding. I mean, once uh, you figure out, the, like, the components the components of it and, and, and how it's built, I mean, it all yeah. kind of correlates. It's it's kind of the same. That's important. I was going to say it's important to do that because, I mean, a lot of products, it almost it stinks because it's planned obsolescence. Like, some of them are glued together. Like, you're not supposed to fix them. I've, like, that's I've, a, cr- I've, that's one thing as I've gotten further, and this is very valuable to anybody that wants to kind of make it in life. You got to go through life realizing that you're not exactly a dumbass, and you should never tell yourself that you're a dumbass. You should hold yourself to a high standard and fill your head with good things. But the, what's it called? You got to realize too that you're not the biggest and the baddest. There's always other people out there, and people have their bad attributes and their good attributes, and some people are better at shit that you're not at, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. So you'll become friends with these people and utilize their strong points and their strong points. It's like building a house. Your plumber might know how to pour concrete and lay drywall, but that's not his specialty. So let him do his 
the toilets and the sinks and let his buddy who does drywall come and let his other buddy that pours slab and stuff do it. And you build a great house or you can have some half ass house that was thrown together by a guy that was mediocre okay at it. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather become friends with people that can do things I can't. And I've become friends with chemical engineers that help me make solvents that remove compounds and stuff that are in boards to keep you from getting to it like oh, certain really? kinds of epoxies and all sorts of stuff oh, cool. and uh yeah i've become friends with uh electrical slash mechatronics engineers that i'm like hey dude i don't understand this can you break it down and let's go grab some beer and like yeah. grab lunch and you guys help me figure it out pay it and you know at, at, there's you know you, you got to make your money work for you and you got to realize that you know money's man-made it's everywhere you can get it from any place anything you drive down the street and you're passing millions of dollars every day it's just sure. how you take it so i don't have that scarcity mindset anymore cash is trash yeah you hang on to cash the government takes it i'd rather have the knowledge because the knowledge is more valuable so i pay people to do things i can't do and i'm very proud to say that absolutely so you do that with your company right, i was gonna too. say hire you always hire the best people and hire the people with the most knowledge and, and then, make sure they compliment you. And then also you. another key value to that too is just also just, it's like, you know, you have leaders and then you have bosses, you know? Yep. That's very true. There's a big right. difference between someone yeah. who's a boss. So and I, I like, inspiring. I like to lead people that are underneath me. I like to inspire them and teach them and stuff. Instead of looking at them and go, oh, you're stupid. I'm the boss. You don't know shit. Do what I say. I'm like, no, bro, come do it with me. Yeah. So, you know, I like helping people. That's one of the reasons I came out. I was willing to come on this podcast because I hate being on camera. I hate talking. Dude, you're doing great, man. But um, I think it's well, the <laughs> beer kind of chilled me there out a go. little bit. <laughs> uh, granted, it's the only one. And by the way, guys, this is this is pretty good beer. You guys should, yeah. if you guys are watching, you should sponsor this, man. I was going to say, come on, Yangling. Still, yeah. fa- still family owned, too. That's rare. That's cool. Right? It hasn't been passed down and poured out everyone awesome. else yeah everyone else has sold out unfortunately throughout the years like all the old beer companies there's only one left uh, uh, that i know of a major beer company is still family owned cool i like heineken but they're pretty good too i forget which holding company owns them now but then out curiosity so with the 90s that you're working on you know the mark IV luxury supra do you think kind of like video games when you look at the trends of who's collecting these cars every 10 years you kind of see it you see a shift so like they'll so start collecting the next decade do you so think well so what the way i've looked at it in regards to that it's like my dad played with like 70s and 80s cars mm-hmm. he was playing with that shit back in like the not the the 90s yeah you know so it's always you know growing up as kids if we get the bug we see the cars that our parents are driving yeah and back then when we're growing up we can't afford the cars that our parents are driving and up until yeah. current economic times where old shit's becoming a absorbently freaking expensive, e- expensive yeah. exuberantly whatever the word is expensive you know as cars got older they depreciated they became cheap nobody yeah. wanted them oh that's an old piece of shit and then we could finally get them exactly so you know i just see my generation our generation you know you're in your 30s oh, yeah. i'm in my 30s you know going ahead and buying the cars that our parents drove i mean yeah. What did our parents drive? They drove like Lexus SCs. We used to see the cool guy drive around right. town, go midlife crisis driving the Supra, you know? Oh, yeah. Paul Walker, freaking oh, Gran Turismo, you oh, yeah. know? Like, we Hollywood. grew up We grew up around it. So we're just gravitating towards our era. Exactly. Of shit that we want. Now that we're adults, if we had a level head on our shoulders and we made the right decisions, now we can afford the cars. And what's get cool the, about... the car- dream. And what's cool about learning about cars now... And this is something I had talked with my mom and my family. I grew up, I grew up in a not super Orthodox Jewish family, but I did. And they're kind of like, if you don't go to school and stuff, they kind of, they kind of frown upon you. You got a set path. Or they got kind of, you know, a they want you to be a doctor or a lawyer, or college, this and that. And, you know, they see me and they're like, why are you playing with these old cars? Hmm. You're dumping your soul into these cars. Like, like even when I bought nicer cars, hmm. you know, still Audis and shit. And they're like, you know, they're like, that's a depreciating asset. I thought you're a businessman, like you're being a dumbass, like you're spending your money. I'm like, the cars have broke down walls. And they're like, what? I'm like, the cars have paid for themselves tenfold mm-hmm. in a different way than cash. Yeah, I might lose cash when I sell this, mm-hmm. but the connection that I've made and the network I've made and the people I've reached because of this vehicle mm-hmm. outweighs the money that I lost. I've already gotten my money out. This car's made me mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of dollars I don't care if I lose $16,000, $17,000 when I get rid of it and move on to the next thing. I'm like, it broke down walls because you go to a car meet and the guy that's financially up here and the guy that's all the way down here and the guy that be, 
dude, they come together. It's like, bro, that's a cool car. And you kick yeah. it. Yeah. You don't care. It's just like me when I hang out with a bunch of my buddies that are all, I have friends that are millionaires and I have friends that, that are on my level, you know, you know, upper six figure earners, you know, not quite millionaire, getting close to it, but you know, you know, you, we, it's just like when you when everybody gets together and they're all talking business and money. Race doesn't re, race, religion, none of that. None of that shit matters no more. Yeah. It's just people with similar interests that are passionate talking about the thing they're passionate about. Absolutely. And then you build network. Like it just breaks oh, yeah. down stuff. So cars have paid for themselves for me. Oh yeah. Cars are great, and I I broke that down to my mom, and finally I think it finally got through her head. She's like, maybe my maybe my loser son's onto something. Yeah. You know, but it, it just breaks down barriers. Absolutely. Breaks down barriers. I mean, you know, cars are great. Cars have saved my life. Yeah. You know, it's cool. And it's not hurting nobody. Yeah, exactly. I could I could be spending that money like a crackhead on drug problems. Which I battled with drugs. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten off of them because of cars. And you, yeah. I built a you business won. because yeah. of cars. Absolutely. I wake up every day and I look forward to tomorrow because I want to buy more car parts. You right? know what fuels the car parts and building the cars. Exactly. That. And then also because I'm in an automotive business, me building the car, it networks and builds my network. Guess what? Tax I get to write. Too. I get to write the car <laughs> off. So guess what? The car's paying for itself. Exactly. Marketing. It's marketing. Well, I said you're it's super. Like a, you have I, you got to put your logo on there. Like every time I see it, because you said it was on a magazine cover, right? The Mark IV. It wasn't a magazine cover. It's in a wheel catalog yeah. for a company called Strassforged, a company that makes the custom one-off billet wheels on my Supra. Yeah. Um, yeah, my car's my car's the poster child for the R10 Strassforged Super Fitment wheels. Yeah, my car's in their, their online catalog. Um, I still have to get time to get the photos taken, but the car's supposed going to be an S3 magazine. Oh, really? Cool. Um, yeah, which is kind of weird because most most – Supras that get featured are like high horsepower, mm. big turbo drag cars. My car, I'm building a motor for it right now, but my car's still a non-turbo Supra. It's not even what? cool yet. That's a thing? It's a non-turbo Supra. Yeah, they made a turbo. I thought they were turbo. non-turbo for like 18 seconds when they left the factory. Then you slap them on there. My, my, car, <laughs> my, my car's still <laughs> non-turbo, so it was a non-turbo uh, automatic car, just right-hand drive, mm. um, imported car. And uh, I just made it stick shift. I put a T56 Magnum in, which was a nightmare. Thank God my buddy was helping me. I was working while having a massive kidney stone so, killing me. So what, but, what was that like, swapping out that bastardized transmission, getting rid of the automatic and putting in the stick shift as they all well, should have? Well, I had converted the Lexus to stick shift as well. And the oh, really? Lexus is very similar. So I already had a lot of knowledge on doing it. Mm -hmm. And the way the T56 is designed and the kit I used was made by Joel Granis from Granis Racing. So it was like his bell housing and his clutch set up. And he's, he's pretty detailed on the instructions, even though I didn't read instructions because let's face it, reading instructions is, you know, not what us guys do very well. <laughs> right. I'm kind of illiterate. Well, well, what did uh, Tim Allen used to say on home improvement? He's like, his, t his kid's saying like, dad, do we need to read instructions? He's like, oh, instructions. Said, no, 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 no. Instructions, that, that's just a manufacturer's suggestion on how to put the thing together. Pretty much, you know, we, <laughs> so me, me and my buddy, we figured it out and uh, it, it got a little irritated and drank a little alcohol and drank a bunch of water and Gatorade because I still had a kidney stone at the time. <laughs> and uh, I found out Gatorade's not really good when you have a kidney stone. But anyway, neither is alcohol, but hey, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we, we stuffed that turkey up in there and made the car stick shift. It's a six speed now. And, nice. Uh, I'm getting ready to tear the motor down, so the motor's going to wind up being torn down. I'm dropping it off at uh, at the machine shop, and uh, I'm going to have them spec it out because, once again, I don't have time being a business owner to do that. Oh, yeah. Um, but I'm going to install the motor myself. I'm going to tune the car myself. Um, the wiring harness was built by Cameron, uh, who's a good friend of mine. He owns Tweak Performance. I'm a vendor for them. I sell their stuff, so it's kind of cool to get oh, cool. there. I, I, liked, I, I mainly like to sell products that I have experience with that I use. Like, I don't want to sell my customers something I wouldn't use in my own stuff. Makes sense. So, you know, what better way to advertise? Hey, look, I'm using their shit. Yeah. I'm not just trying yeah, to yeah. sell you it. Like, I have it on my own personal car. It's in my baby. It's in, it's this, in my it's baby. In my name's on the title of yeah. this. Like, you know. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it should it should be pretty cool soon. Should have about 1,000 horsepower, fully built 2J. That's going to be insanely cool. It's going to be insanely cool. Hopefully, I don't kill myself. In no, it. you'll be fine. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't kill myself in it. But uh, It's cool. And then after that, I have my Lexus up for sale. If nobody wants to buy the Lexus, I'm going to probably just wind up. Bring a trailer or some auction site? Uh, or? They won't let go and bring a trailer. I was just going to really? sell it. Yeah, it's got too many miles too on it. Too it's custom? High, it's highly modified. Oh, uh, I got you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
if they don't do that, uh, I'm getting better at being on camera. So I'm going to just start document and build and maybe teach some people how to do some fab work and whatnot. And I'm going to revamp the Lexus. It doesn't need to be built. It's already built, but it needs to be revamped. It needs to be kind of brought back. There's a couple little things I want to tweak on it, but that's if I keep it. I really, I'm trying to move it to a higher end market right now because um, the older cars, I've kind of fixed so many of them now. I don't really think there's much left to yeah. fix. And being a business owner, you have to make forward progression. So you can't Where's just market lay, going. Yep. So, so you can't just lay, you know, aloft in, you know, the sit land, back. The, the, you know, uh, what's the word? You can't sit on your lo loyals or a similar yeah, it's, it's mean, a term for that. You, yeah. you need to make forward progression and have consistency. If you just become complacent and stay yep. where you're at, you're going to die. That's when the competition eats your lunch. That's when the competition eats your lunch. What happens mm -hmm. when you stop moving every day? I just know exactly. this because the past couple of days in bed after having surgery, yeah. you, you become stiff, you become useless, you, you're tired. Wait, you're, is, it, is this video, is this now recorded evidence you took a day off? I, 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 I think that's possible. I still work, dude. I was still answering <laughs> I know emails, you. taking phone calls, bro. That it never quits. I'm going to leave here today and go home and answer emails. I mean, it's what I do. I like it. I mean, you can't. It's that entrepreneurial spirit. You so few stop. people have it. So my, my outlook on it is, is there's big companies that are way bigger out, bigger than me mm -hmm. with a whole marketing team and all this. And then there's me solo by myself. These people close at five o'clock. You know how mm. I get the upper hand on these assholes here? You don't close. I, I don't close. That's right. All that free market right there, when they're not eating, I'm taking. And then those people talk. Yep. And it, their voice gets me the work that these people are trying to get during the day. So I'm just I'm just double grabbing, right. bro. Then they all talk to each other. Hey, my ECU is crapped out. You know who hustles? You know, you know who doesn't take time off? You know who's still fixing stuff? Reach out to yeah. Josh. Realize most. And I've also gone above and beyond a lot. I've I've changed the game too. A lot of these other companies, they 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 got just an image stock. You know, here's an ECU, one hundred and forty nine dollars lifetime warranty. And then you go on their website, it's got a corny watermark it says bullshit ECUs dot com, and right really? here, you know, and like you get it back and it don't work, or if you open it up, it break their warranty seals that yeah. their imaginary warranty because when you call them, they play dumb. You know, you get in there, and it's literally, it looks like Helen Keller and Stevie Wonder had a field day in there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> it's horrible. So I started taking pride in the installation of parts and how, keeping things clean and organized and unified and all this. And I have nothing to hide. I post what it looks like inside. Your I Facebook pictures look awesome. I send my customers pictures yeah. of inside their ECUs. They look, they look, like, they, they look cleaner than when they came from the factory. Well, sometimes. I mean, sometimes you, you can't totally save it but i mean yeah. you can save it but you can't make it look pretty some things just sometimes you just got to kind of throw morals out the window and and make things work especially on a lot of stuff i work on it's discontinued so it's either you fix it or you're screwed yeah you know but like all these other shops they come in they'll see a little burn mark on the board like oh fuck I can't fix it sorry gotta buy a new one i'm yeah. like yes let me play with it. Like, let, me, let me see if you can salvage send it, it. Send it to me. Yeah. Oh, but the shop said they can't fix it. I'm not them, buddy. Yeah, I bet them. you right now, $800, I can get that thing working. Yeah. Send, send it to me. If you if it doesn't work, I will give you $800. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, dude, I'll sign a paper. I'll send yeah. this thing. Okay, cool. They send it. And then the next thing you know, like a week later, bro, my car's never ran this good. That's awesome. And I'm proud of that. Yeah, definitely. There's very few things I'm proud about in life because my life's yeah. been pretty rough and shitty and I've yeah. done some really fucked up stupid shit. But... I mean, I'm, I'm saving people's babies, um, and I'm just, I'm saving the 90s, bro. Heck yeah. Well, those things belong on the road being driven. I mean, Dude, my 90s whole, cars are cool. They got cars. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Per, to me, that's almost kind of the peak because after the 90s, you got more computers. That they become more, you're less in touch. You lose the analog feel of the 90s. Like, you had, in 97, you had the new Corvette. I mean, that thing was, the Z06 came out a couple years later. I mean, only a stick shift as every Corvette should be. I mean, the '90s were great. The '90s were great. And that Supra. I mean, part. I mean, part of me thinks the Mark IV Supra. Like, part of me thinks half of the appeal is because it was in the original Fast and Furious movie. Like, not the orange one. Like, when all my friends are talking about growing up. Like, that's where they first saw it. And then since then, everyone's. A lot of the people it. that I know that are in the Supra community, believe it or not, they more so uh, talking to them. They get more get into the Supras. From playing like the original Gran Turismo. Oh yeah, I was gonna say those games too. That was what made me want a Supra was the Castrol Supra. Oh really? The the GT the the Japanese touring car series Supra, yeah. which I didn't find out until about a couple years ago. It didn't even have a two J and it had a four cylinder engine in it to make it compliant. 
Really? And to change the center of gravity and have the engine sit further against the firewall and the engine bay for handling. Yeah, and then later on, they wound up swapping a V8 into it. The car's never had a 2J in it. But I didn't really? care. It was a Supra. Yeah, exactly. I love it. That's so neat. That's cool. And now, Cassie, what do you like to do outside, outside work? I think you're telling me you're starting to collect timepieces now? Uh, a little I, bit? I like watches. I'm always interested in, like, uh, have a little bit of machining background in me, too, you know, from working for race teams and stuff. Um, I'm, I like the, the intricacy of, like, like micro machining, like mm -hmm. in little tiny gears and springs and little tiny things and hand assembly and yeah and stuff. So you know, I, I like higher end watches because they got a lot of that cool stuff in them, like the Rolex I'm wearing. Oh, yeah. um, what kind of says a submariner or submariner? I can't pronounce it. But submariner. 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 It shows how cultured I am. I got a little garment on here. Or does it say <laughs> submariner? I don't know. No, I think you're right. Submariner. That, that's what I, it is. It I feel right. like an idiot. I own it. I don't know if yeah. I'm saying it right, but um. It's worth, yeah. I mean, it's worse of art. I mean, it's, it's the one thing where it's still handmade. I mean, it's, it's dirty. I need to clean it. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, my favorite nonprofit. My favorite nonprofit. Rolex is a nonprofit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> when the founder died, it was in his will. Like he wanted the company to still be around, but be a nonprofit legally. That's but, crazy. But like, yeah, like from a manufacturing perspective, it's the one company I know of in the world where they make everything in house. Yeah, they they, they even every have their own reserves for their own gold and yeah. metals and everything. Like they all they they have the raw materials and they make it all. Like, can you think of a number of the company in this global economy where, where this global economy, everything we have has components from all over, and you know inherently there's less quality control because there's more you know more parties working together, different companies. But Rolex is all in house, like all top quality. Yeah. Um. Rolex is pretty, they're pretty nice. Um, I like, uh, I also have a bunch of other watches from Tag. I like oh, yeah. Tag Heuer watches. Yeah, I know a lot of Rolex guys are going to go, oh, why do you want that shit? They look great. They look great. I yeah. love them. They got some really nice racing ones too with the Canada I like the brand. Formula One history behind yeah. it. I'm a car guy. Yeah. I, mean, I don't, everything I have, I don't buy it because for the status. I just, yeah. I just, I'm just living life. Absolutely. I'm the poor kid that grew up with nothing, and now I'm, I'm working on getting all the things I wanted growing up. Heck yeah, that's awesome. And, you know, my dad always wanted stuff and aspired to have better and just couldn't do it. And, you know, I feel, you know, I'm the last child that my dad has and, you know, the only child that he had. And uh, I bear his last name, and uh, I feel, you know, it's my duty and my honor to, to you know, achieve the goals for us. Yeah that he couldn't do for him. Absolutely. And you know, that's just, it's kind of what keeps me going. That's awesome. And I was gonna say, we'll put the Relentless Motorsports in the description as well, so they can reach out to you if they need some extra help on their vehicles. Sure. Perfect, dude. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Josh. No really appreciate it, a great time. Later, man. Thank you everyone for taking the time for listening. Don't forget, Topping Talks is also on YouTube, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and more. Also, don't forget to take the time to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, don't forget to take the time to tell your family, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, heck, Tell your enemies, tell anyone and everyone, just stay safe and have a great night. Topping talks.